Welcome to Highline Excel 2013 class video number 46. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for week 9, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video we want to talk about a histogram chart. Let's go over to H answer. This is a histogram and it's a column chart, but the columns are touching. And the reason why is it's continuous data. Usually we have categories like names or something and you have to have gaps between them. But when it's number data, and this goes from 0 to 10, and this one goes from 10 to 20, there's no gap there. There's no gap because the top of this one is 10 and the bottom of this one is 10. So it's continuous number data along here. So you want to indicate that with no gap between the columns. Now all this chart articulates is it's counting how many students got between 70 and 80 on their from this grade data. So here clearly 39 between 70 and 80. 40 between 80 and 90. So visually, we can see most of the students got between 70 and 90 on the test. All right, let's go see how to do this. Now, this is going to involve doing formulas and then creating the chart. First, whenever I do a chart like this that has a min and a max, I want to look through the data set and find the min and then the max. That'll help me decide how many categories to have. I'm going to decide from this to start at 0, which is right below that 0.63, and then go all the way up to 110. I want to have even increments for each category. So we'll go from like 0 to 10, 10 to 20, et cetera. Now let's build our min and max. Then we're going to use a text formula to build our category, and then use count ifs to count between the min and max. If you look over here, these categories right here, this is going to be a label that we create with the formula so it looks nice on our chart. All right, let's come over to H. First, I need the first category. So I say equals the start value, tab. Then I'm going to say equals whatever the min is, relative cell reference, plus my increment, F4 to lock it, Control-Enter. Now, for this formula, the second value for min, I'm going to say equals whatever the max is. And now I'm going to copy this down one. Notice right now it's looking there. This one's always going to be looking to the max from the previous category. Now we can copy these two down. Now if we did a straight count if off of this min and max, we would double count because there's a 10 here and here. And actually, we talked about this earlier in the class. We have to choose, are we going to include the lower limit or the upper limit? I'm going to choose to include the lower limit, but not the upper limit. All right, let's create a label. And there's a few ways we can create labels. And I usually create it uh, based on an algebra type expression. But I'm going to do something slightly different here. I'm going to do something like this, greater than or equal to 0 and less than the, the max. And we'll create a formula so we can copy it down, and that'll be our label on our chart. So you ready? Equals, and this is a text format. So I say, in double quotes, greater than or equal to, in double quotes, and I'm going to join it to the lower end. And then I'm going to say, and, that's the join symbol. I need to have the word and here, so I, in double quotes, I'm going to do a space, A-N-D, capitalize, space, in double quotes. Right now, just looking at this, if I double click this down, this would always give me the lower criteria and the word and. Now that I've double clicked and send it down, I'm going to hit F2 to put the active cell in edit mode, use our join symbol ampersand, put our operator, which is going to be in double quotes, less than, in double quotes, ampersand, and click on that. Uh, 10 or that max. Those are relative cell references, obviously. So when I Control Enter, that will populate this edited formula into our highlighted range. And there's our category. Now we'll look at how this, what this looks like on the chart when we make our chart. And we may have to come back and amend this and do something uh, to make the actual label on the chart look neat. But right now, that's looking good. That has nothing to do with our 
counting formula here is just the label for our chart. Now we can do count ifs. And count ifs simply counts with multiple criteria or one or more criteria. The first range, criteria range, is all the numbers. Control Shift Down Arrow F4 to lock it. The criteria is going to be in double quotes, greater than or equal to n double quotes. In the count ifs, you have to join it with the ampersand with whatever the lower limit is. That criteria one right there, if we were to hit F9 and evaluate it, see that it evaluates to exactly what count ifs needs, the first criteria. Control Z. Now I type a comma, criteria range. I have to repeat it. Control Shift Down Arrow F4, comma, and criteria 2. It's less than in double quotes and then join it to the max. Now, depending on what type of categories, this is between criteria. It's also and criteria because two things have to be true. We saw multiple examples earlier in the class. Sometimes, like with month data, you have the equal sign in both places. But in this situation, where you don't want to double count, we have to choose one side getting the equal and the other side not getting the equal. All right, I'm going to close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. All right, so there's our count. We can come to the last one and see that we got it right. Now let's create our chart. We have our labels at the top, our labels for the horizontal axis, and the height for each column. I'm going to use the keyboard Alt F1. The default chart is column. Now we're going to have to do a bunch of things to this. Right off the bat, I'm going to delete this because we're going to put the numbers at the top of each column. So the vertical axis, I hit Delete. I'm going to select the horizontal lines, Delete. Select the columns. I can use the keyboard Control-1 to open up the task pane. Now I go over to Series. Oh, it's already on the series. And Gap Width, I can simply say 0. Tab, and there we have uh, 0 Gap Width. Now let's go over to Format once we have this selected here. I would like a fill. I want to do this very colors by point. And then I'm going to come down to border, and I'm going to say solid line and choose black. And so now I can clearly see those columns are looking good. Now I'm going to select these columns again, come up to our plus, data labels. I'm simply going to check this. It puts the actual value there. That is amazing. Now I want to link. I'm going to drag this down a little bit. I have my title right there. So I'm going to click on my chart title, F2 to send my cursor up to the formula bar, equal sign, and then I'm going to click on G4, Enter. Now watch this. I'm going to come back over to this plus, and I'm going to say uh, axis titles. And look at this. It puts generic ones. The Vertical one is selected. I'm immediately going to hit F2 to throw my cursor up to the formula bar, equal sign. And I can't quite see it, so I'm going to drag it down. This is probably going to mess it up. Have to do that again. Notice uh, it put something ridiculous in there, but I'm going to highlight this and delete. And now I'm going to type in equal sign. And it's frequency. That's the label I'm going to use, Enter. All right, now I'm going to have to do something tricky over here. I'm going to click on the horizontal axis, F2 equal sign, and then click on Grade Categories, Enter. So that's looking pretty good. And even these are looking fine. But notice how sometimes they're on three lines and two lines. So we want to kind of see an advanced charting label trick. We're going to go over to the cells. Actually, I'm going to close this. Go over to the cells. Escape. Now, we would like to do something like word wrap. Now, when I click in a cell right here, for example, and go up to Home, Wrap Text, it's already on. If I were to change the column width, you see how it wraps? There is a way to do that in a formula. Control Z, I'm going to keep that there. Another uh, example of what we're about to do in a formula, let me show you in a cell. If you were to type something, let me come down here. 
grade. And if you want to manually send your cursor down in the cell, you have to use the keyboard Alt-Enter. Alt-Enter adds a new line in a cell. And then I could type, right? So I could do that manually. What we need is in a formula, we need that Alt-Enter, which is a line break. And there is a way to do it. This is going to be amazing. Now, what we like to have is to have the criteria on the first line, the word and on the second line, and then the second criteria on the third line. So if we look at this, this little bit right here, that's the operator and the number. And we want that on the first line. So somehow right here, we need to tell it to do a line break. And the way you do it is you use the character function. And you say the number 10. Now, briefly, earlier in this class, we talked about the ASCII characters. There's 255. And the character or the code number or the ASCII number for line break is 10. So that's how you put it into a formula. And then I'm going to join that. So right now, we have our greater than or equal to 0 a line return, and now we're going to join it to the word and. And I'm going to get rid of this space here, because we're not going to need it, because it's going to be on a line all by itself. Now we need to do the same thing here. We need to force this little bit right here broop, to the third line. Well, we're going to have to use the character function again. Character 10, and then join. All right. So what we've done is we have 1, 2, 3, 4 ampersands, because we have five things. This character 10 is not going to show up as a thing. It's just a, a hard line return. Control Enter. You can already see it work there. Double click and send it down. And now we have consistent labels across the bottom of our chart. Now, this doesn't look good. If we were going to print this out, then I would like to probably have spaces here. But since this is just the source data for our histogram, Boom, that is going to work. All right, that is a histogram. We had continuous number data, and so we wanted the columns touching. We saw how to change the gap width, do a bunch of things to the chart, including amend our text formula with the character 10 function. All right, we'll see you next video.